My favorite clothing items often range in age from a small child to a prepubescent teen. I talk a lot about making your clothes last and loving what you have as it's really the very best way to approach sustainable fashion on an individual level. Today I want to actually share the ways I care for my clothes to make them last years. I realize though that taking care of clothing is only one angle of making clothes last, so I also want to talk about finding your personal style, what to do if you change sizes, and how to spot quality pieces. If you're new here, I'm Lily and I talk about sustainable fashion fashion and living on this channel. If you're into those things too, I hope you'll stick around. Just a heads up that this video is sponsored by Organic Basics, so stick around till the end to learn about a really cool sustainable brand. Let's first start with some sustainable clothing care tips. Number one is don't listen to companies. People will say that you need to replace things like underwear and bras every 6 to 12 months. And while there are studies around this, they're funded by clothing companies themselves. So of course they want us to replace our pieces more. There's really no set expiration date for any clothing, including underwear. I'll link some articles below where doctors and professors agree on this. I have underwear and sports bras still in good shape that are over 8 years old. And some people might find that gross, but it works fine for me. Of course, if your clothing starts to sag, get massive holes, or isn't supposed supportive, you should replace it. But don't feel like you have to get rid of something because of these arbitrary rules. Number two is to wash less often. Washing cycles can be hard on your clothes and you don't need to wash most pieces after each wear other than underwear and sweaty workout clothes. For example, I typically wash winter base layers after two to four wears, my pajamas every week, and sweaters maybe every month. I also wash denim really rarely. There is that urban myth about freezing your denim to kill bacteria instead of washing, but it actually Actually doesn't do anything so maybe wash your denim every now and then. I do wash summer pieces more often since I can get really sweaty but even then I try to go a couple wears before washing. Basically I wash something if it's visibly dirty, often from spilling food on myself, or when it starts to smell. To keep my clothes separate I typically keep my too clean to be washed but too dirty to go back in the closet clothing on a chair in my room. <laughs> Number three is to wash on cold. To save energy and your clothing, consider using a cold water cycle. Warmer water is harsher on fabrics and can lead to shrinkage, fading, and more microfiber loss. You used to need warm water to activate detergents, but modern detergents generally work equally well with cold water, and cold water is actually better for delicates, colorful fabrics, and certain types of stains. Number four is to use a microplastic filter. Synthetic fibers like polyester, nylon, and acrylic shed microplastics each time they're washed. Most activewear and fast fashion pieces are made out of synthetics like those. To prevent microplastic pollution, consider using a Guppy Friend washing bag. The bag will capture 90-95% to 95 of microfibers and it protects your clothing like a delicate bag would, extending the life of your pieces. I got my Guppy Friend bag from Organic Basics and I'll link it below. It costs $33, but you can use my 10% off code on it. There are also filters you can add to your washing machine to catch microfibers, like this one from Girlfriend Collective. There's an ongoing movement in the UK to get filters added to domestic and commercial machines, and you can sign the petition to show your support if you're a UK resident. I don't know of any movements like this in the US, but if you do know of one, let me know and I'll link it below. If you'd like to protect your clothing made of natural materials, like delicates, you can also wash them in a pillowcase. Number five is to air dry. Air drying your clothes helps you save money and electricity and it's pretty common outside of the US and UK. The drying cycle can be pretty harsh with the high temperatures and it can contribute to shrinkage and pilling. You can get a collapsible clothes rack for 10 to $20 or you can check your local buy nothing group to see if anyone is giving one away. These are groups where people give away and get things for free within their communities and I absolutely love them. If you have space outside, you can also consider using a clothesline. Your clothing will feel stiffer at first if you air dry them, but once you wear them, it'll break in pretty quickly. Number six is to learn to revive your clothes. Over time, certain parts of your clothing will break down, and that's where learning to mend can make a big difference. I usually get holes in the armpits and crotch and thigh area, and it's pretty quick to patch those up because I don't have to do it in a way that looks pretty. There are lots of free sewing tutorials on YouTube, I'll link one below, and you can also ask a friend or family member to teach you. If you don't have time to sew, see if there are tailors near you. This is a great tip from my friend Nina of the vegan travel blog Lemons and Luggage. Tailors aren't as easy to access in the US, but they're more common in Europe and the businesses are often owned by immigrant women. Pilling is another common concern for older clothes, but you can fix this with a fabric shaver or a blunt razor. To prevent pilling in the first place, try to avoid blended fabrics like polyester and cotton and wash your clothes inside out. 
And finally, number seven is to store your clothes properly. Sweaters can get stretched out if you hang them up, so try to fold yours. It can also help to have sturdier wooden hangers for heavier items like jackets. And if you need moth repellent, dried peppermint leaves and cedar wood are said to work well. Make sure to find a dry storage space as well as you don't want your clothes to get moldy. Clothing here is just one component of making your clothes last. There are a few other reasons you might need to replace your clothes, so let's talk about those. Number one is that your clothes are out of style. In today's fast fashion world, a lot of people don't get rid of clothing because it's in bad condition. They get rid of it because they don't like it anymore, often because it's no longer trendy. To avoid cycling through trends quickly, you'll need to find your personal style. Personal style is kind of a nebulous term, but basically you want to figure out what you actually like versus what's currently popular. If you buy a lot of trends, I'd recommend slowing down or even doing a no-buy period for a few months. Figure out what you naturally gravitate towards in your closet, then start building mood boards on Pinterest or saved Instagram collections to try to pin down common threads in your preferences. Determine your signature pieces and build outfits around those. For example, my signature pieces are vintage silk scarves, turtlenecks and mock necks, and funky earrings. When you're ready to bring something into your closet, ask yourself, do I have something similar that could work? Could I get at least 30 wears out of it? Will I keep it for years? Does it go with things I already own? Will I still want it if it's not trendy? These steps will help you avoid buying clothing you don't truly love. Number two is that you change sizes. I've had the privilege or curse of not really changing sizes since middle slash high school. Puberty didn't really hit, I guess. Yes. It's totally normal for your body to change though and you shouldn't feel bad if you can no longer fit into your old clothes. You deserve clothes that fit and make you feel confident. If your body changes, you can still extend the useful life of your clothing by passing it on to someone who will use it. I recommend giving your clothes away directly to people you know or using your buy nothing group, but I have a whole post about getting rid of clothes responsibly if you need more options. If your weight tends to fluctuate, you can also consider keeping your clothing so you don't have to keep buying and replacing pieces. To make your wardrobe as flexible as possible, you might also try things like a pants extender, which can be found online for a few bucks. Stretchy fabrics, flowy silhouettes, and adjustable pieces like wrap dresses or paper bag pants can also work for changing bodies. I know that for kids, parents often actually buy larger sizes so that they can grow into the clothes. And number three is that your clothing is bad quality. If you're taking care of your clothing and it's still falling apart quickly, the problem may actually be the clothing quality. A higher price doesn't always mean higher quality or even more ethical or sustainable practices. Some fast fashion can certainly last a long time if you take care of it. I have fast fashion basics that are over eight years old. That said, fast fashion is not made to last since these companies want us to consume more. I also have fast fashion tops that are fraying after only a handful of wears. This is no fault of the garment workers. They are skilled workers, but they're just given cheap materials and forced to sew quickly. To spot quality, Quality clothing look for things like neat and secure seams. They should be straight without any loose threads and the patterns should match up at the seams. Extra buttons. Some button-ups and cardigans will come with extra buttons which can indicate that they are made to last and be repaired. You should also check if the buttons are sewn on securely. Sturdy fabric. Some clothing is meant to have lighter fabrics but you should avoid anything that seems super thin as it probably won't hold up. This is especially the case for base layers like leggings and long sleeve shirts or t-shirts. Natural materials. Synthetics can last a long time, but I try to avoid them unless I'm buying recycled synthetic activewear or getting used clothing. Like I mentioned, blended clothing like polyester and cotton can also pill easily. Natural fabrics to look out for include organic cotton, hemp, and linen. There are also some more sustainable semi-synthetics like Tencel, Lyocell, and Ecoviro. If you're looking for specific brands, slow fashion brands tend to be better quality since they tend to have more thoughtful production and quality materials. This video is actually sponsored by a sustainable fashion brand, Organic Basics, and I wanna take a moment to talk about them. Organic Basics is a Danish brand with both masculine and feminine styles. They're best known for their organic cotton underwear, and I first talked about them in my sustainable underwear video. They're continuing to add other styles though, including regular clothing and activewear. One of the things I admire most about them is their factory transparency. They list their suppliers online, and you can click on each one to learn about their certifications and worker benefits, plus which pieces are made there. I was gifted two Silver Tech Active sports bras to finally replace a couple bras that are no longer supportive or falling apart. These bras were sewn in an SA8000 certified factory in Portugal and are made with 89% recycled nylon. I also received a pair of Silver Tech Active ankle socks made from 60% recycled wool and in the same factory. All orders ship plastic free and the emissions are offset. 
While Organic Basics is on the pricier side, the bras are $60 and the socks are $31. I can tell that these pieces are going to last me a long time. The sports bras are double layered and anti-odor, so I won't have to wash them aggressively to get the stench out. I really stink after my runs and the bras actually don't stink. I do wish the straps were a bit wider and adjustable, but they're well reinforced. The socks are comfy and they're not prickly like most wool. If you happen to need something, I have a 10% off code for Organic Basics that I'll leave in the description box. As always, there's no pressure to shop and please do so mindfully if you need something. Let me know if you have more tips for making your clothes last and please also share with me your most loved piece of clothing. Mine is probably a 12 year old pair of running shorts from middle school that I still wear to this day and I love them. My friend shared this really funny tweet she saw where someone said, why does no one tell you that when you pick out a pair of athletic shorts from TJ Maxx at 14 years old, you are in fact making a decision that will last longer than any of your adult relationships. And I totally feel this one and it'll be interesting to see how long I can make these shorts last. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.